let's discuss the rights of the mother in Islam. Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Isra, chapter number 17, verse number 23 and 24, we have ordained for the human beings that they worship none but Allah and they be kind to the parents. And if one of them or both of them reach old age, don't say a word of contempt. Don't say off to them. But address them with honor and lower to them your wing of humility and pray to Almighty God that have mercy on them and bless them as they cherish me in childhood. Almighty God says that after worshipping Almighty God, the next point is that you have to be good to the parents. And if one of them or both of them reach old age, don't say off to them and address them with honor and lower to them your wing of humility and pray to Almighty God that have mercy on them and cherish them, bless them as the cherished me in childhood. The Quran says in Surah Anam, chapter number 6, verse number 151, and Surah Ankabut, chapter number 29, verse number 8, that we have enjoined the human beings to be kind to the parents. The Quran repeats the same message in Surah Luqman, chapter number 31, verse number 14, and Surah Akaf, chapter number 46, verse number 15, that we have enjoined on the human beings to be good to the parents. And the verse continues, especially to the mothers. The Quran says in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 1, respect the womb that bore you. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad it's mentioned in several hadith, including a Sahih hadith of Sunnah Nisai, the book of Jihad, chapter number 6, hadith number 3106. The beloved Prophet said, Paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother. That does not mean that if my mother is walking on the street and if she walks on filth and dirt, that thing becomes paradise. What the Prophet meant was when he said, Paradise lies beneath the feet of your mother means if you love your mother, if you respect your mother, if you're obedient to your mother, if you're kind to your mother, inshallah, you shall enter paradise. There's a hadith in Sahih Bukhari, in volume number eight, in the book of Adab, the book of Good Manners, chapter number two, hadith number two, in the new edition of Bukhari, it's hadith number 5971, where a man approaches the Prophet and asks him that who in this world deserves the maximum love and compassion? The beloved Prophet said, it's your mother. The man asked after that too. The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that too. The Prophet said, your mother. The man asked after that too. Then the Prophet said, your father. That means 75% of the love and compassion goes to your mother. 25% goes to your father. Three-fourths of the love and compassion goes to the mother, and 25% of the love and compassion goes to the father. In short, the mother gets the gold medal, she gets the silver medal, as well as the bronze medal. The father has to be satisfied with a mere consolation prize. These are the teachings of Islam. I've got no option over it. Let's discuss the rights of the sister in Islam. The Quran says in Surah Tawbah, chapter number 9, verse number 71, well, mu'minina wal mu'minat, ba'azum alia ba'az, that the believing men and women, they are supporters unto one another. That means they socially support each other. They are like brothers and sisters unless otherwise. And a beloved Prophet Muhammad he referred to the woman as shakat. One of the meaning of the Arabic word shakat means a sister. The other meaning is one half. And we know the world population is divided approximately into equal halves of male and female. So one half is male, one half is female. And the Prophet referred to the woman as a sister. Just because the social rights in Islam the uplift the woman, what would you say? That are the women's rights in Islam, are they protected or are they subjugated? 